Okay, I thought we'd talk a little bit about filter media uh, as used in HVAC systems. Now this is your standard little old pleated type filter. Pleated meaning it's an extended length. If I cut the ends off it, it spreads out wider so there's more area than just what you see. Uh, they're fairly common. This one's probably, and I don't have the numbers on this, this is probably 30-35% efficient. Uh, it's okay. One of the problems with these filters, the pleated type filters, if you get more efficient ones, you tend to have quite a bit of pressure drop across your uh, furnace. So, you don't want a lot of pressure drop because that's going to reduce efficiencies and so on. But let's just kind of go over what these filters have. Now, here we got the back side of it. You notice it's got the grid, cardboard grid, and it's also got wires. What those are for is if, of course, no homeowner would ever do this, you forgot to change your filter. Well, eventually that filter is going to plug up and try to suck right out of there. And actually the blower will suck filters out of these things sometimes. And so they put that, this grid here and these wires here to keep it from sucking it out. That's all that is. Uh, it's also telling you, do not put this uh, side of this towards the return air. Put this side towards the furnace. And if you got some duct work, and I'll do a little ditty on duct work to kind of show where that would be, uh, this should be towards the fan of the appliance so that when I'm using it, the air is moving this way. Okay, you can see. Here's our set of ductwork. Our return air is coming down like this, going through the filter, up to the furnace, uh, and out the supply. So if your filter's sitting here, across the duct like that, then the airflow arrow should be pointing down. And of course, if it was down here someplace, it would be pointing towards this fan. That's all that is. Uh, it's not a bad idea to take a magic marker and put an airflow arrow on your return air. Uh, just a suggestion. I tell people to replace these filters once a month. You could probably get away with longer periods with these pleateds. But remember, the longer you go, the more pressure drop there will be across this filter. So, uh, the reason mostly I tell people to do it once a month is because they'll do it. Where a lot of times you won't do it once every two months. It's kind of like paying your bills. So anyway, uh, that's a pleated filter. If I made a recommendation on the type of media filter, I would say something like that. Uh, there's a ton of them on the market and they're all tell you they're the most wonderful thing in the world. The problem is, if you get something that's a really good filter, it is going to plug up faster. So, uh, that's always going to be a problem. Don't expect a filter to clean your house. It's not going to do it. It'll, it can only clean the air that gets to it, and this is only 30 to 35% efficient. It's not any higher than that. Now, you can get 95% HEPAs. They're about a hundred bucks. Uh, the Space Guard is one. I'm not going to show you that because I ain't going to buy one. They're really expensive. Real deep pleats are six inches wide. Have to have a special uh, deal in the duct to fit them in. And they usually don't have to change but once a year unless there's dusty conditions. So anyway, that's the pleated filter. Let me show you another one here. Okay, here's a really cool one here. This is what we used to call a horsehair filter. Now this thing's kind of falling apart because it's been laying around here outside and everything. Uh, it's kind of just a media sort of weird stuff like that. Maybe it is horse hair, I don't know. Uh, 
it doesn't filter for sour apples. It does have some electrostatic properties, which means as the air goes through, it tends to put a charge on these little thingies here, and they tend to grab dirt. I wouldn't say that's the best way to, you know, I wouldn't count on it anyway. Uh, they have to have <clears throat> some kind of frame. The way I got this one is manufacturers sometimes send these things with the furnace. This is their recommendation, I guess. I don't put that thing in my house. But it's not a very good filter. Uh, if you want to make it better, I don't know if you can still get it or not, but there used to be an oil that you could spray on filters like this, and now it would catch dirt. But this thing isn't going to catch anything, but, uh, well, probably won't let small birds through in mice. But everything else get through it. Okay, here we got uh, the El Cheapo of El Cheapos. And what I want to give you an idea about these is... Let's see. Now you can see that piece of wood I put behind that silly thing. There's almost nothing in there. These run about 10 to 15 percent efficient. Uh, real cheap filter. The only good thing about that filter is uh, there's very little pressure drop across it. It's very low. So uh, these do have one thing on them. And you notice this is kind of interesting. This thing doesn't have any any uh, wires or anything on it. So it'll just suck right out. Uh, it does have an airflow arrow on it. Now all of them have this airflow arrow. See, there's your arrow. So it is supposed to go towards the fan. Uh, so if the fan is on the other side of it here, they actually spray a little bit of oil in this stuff. I don't seen in this there may not be any on it they spray a little oil on it to catch some crap just like that other one that you could spray oil on but these won't catch hardly anything but they don't have much of a pressure drop I don't see a lot of these used anymore okay uh, I'm gonna do uh, do one on electronic air cleaners also and you can see how they work uh, and we'll check pressure drop with different filters in a ductwork system. But that's uh, the first one on filters.